In episode 7, we continue looking at color overlay, and today we're going to talk about a soft tint that gives you that moody feeling of romance or relaxation, something that just tunes down the image. It's very similar to what we did in the previous video, but I'm going to talk a bit about pastel colors so that you can get an idea of what works and what doesn't work and do not go too bright. It's going to be short, I think very similar to the previous video. By the way, I'm JP and welcome you to Websites for Beginners and Better Images. Hope you learned something in this video. In the previous video, I'd shown you these two headers and explained to you that there is a color overlay applied to this and the fact that maybe you want contrast, but also you want to create a specific mood. And often these kind of soft moods is to bring in something romantic, something a little bit more subtle, something peaceful. And we also had this one for the wedding. And I explained to you that if you look at these letters, they are white. But if you look at his collar and her dress, which is white, we guess it's white, it's not white. There is a tint there. And that tint is often a very peachy, rosy color. And it's a soft color. So let's go and bring an image in our page builder because, again, tints, overlays can be done within your page builder. And I'm going to do this very quickly. Let's just do this. And I'm bringing in this image here of a mother with her baby. Then, okay. So there's a few reasons actually bringing in a tint for this image is a good idea if you are displaying it on a website. Maybe you want to, you are selling something regarding toys for children or for newborn babies, uh, mother care, something like that. Our image is way too grainy. You see these little dots in the shadows, these dark areas, the shadows. We say it's grainy. It looks like there's sand lying on the image. So by also applying a tint to this image, we soften that out as well. So we go to our settings for our image, our overlay, and then we apply. And you see this one over here. This is perfect. This is just a perfect color for it. This, I think, is almost peach. Like, um, yeah, I think so. So when I apply it, way too strong, so we reduce it quite a bit. And there we go. Now we have softened out that hard graininess that was in the image. We also applied this tint. We made it softer. We as humans think things that have a pastel color. We just respond to it a little bit more friendlier. And that's why we do it for things like weddings, engagement, children, uh, baptisms, those kind of things. Let me just show you what I mean when I talk about pastel. So scheme color, scheme color, scheme color, scheme color. Yes, schemecolor.com. Very nice one for pastel color tones. And here you see the colors that I am referring to. Let's say I go to this color over here and I copy it. I go back into my page builder and I just paste that hex. It's going to apply it. And you see, again, we are very close to actually the color that we start with. Let's make it a little bit more opaque so we can see the difference. Let's take another one. We take this one over here, copy. Then let's paste that. And you see now we have that pink effect. This is where I have to be careful, though, is that the pastels are very good, but the brighter pastels can actually make your image look a little bit oversaturated. So when it starts to look like this, you just reduce it a little bit more again. Let's bring in one more, especially this lavender one. And I want to show you the more intense, the more saturation you have in a color, the harder the color will become. Let's paste this. And now you see the image is not as soft as it used to be. And if I take it up, you will see it is still nice. It gives you that color, but it's a little bit harder than the ones that we have previously. So when you are working with pastels, look for these ones. And even this one here on the left, you'll see there's a few others down here. Pastel dress, also a very nice one. Okay, so look at this green. Even though it's green, it's not pink. It is something that will be perfect for a wedding. You can apply that. Gives you a little bit of a foresty feeling for that. Let's go and see how you again will do this within a photo editor if you want to do it outside your page builder. Open Topaz Studio 2 and I think there is a trial version. So if you want to play around with it, follow the link in the description below and download the trial. I think it's like 30 days and then you can also test it out a little bit. Follow along with the videos. Lots of other software that we use here, but for the beginning part, I'm going to focus on Topaz Studio 2. Let's bring in that image. This one over here. Click and I drag it. You can see why that image appeared so grainy when I brought it into the page builder because I was effectively only using this part of the image. 
which means we are blowing it up. And that that is acceptable for us here becomes enlarged. It becomes overemphasized. And then it looks that grainy feeling. Right. So we remember from the previous videos add filter and under creative, we've got essential here. And then we've got creative and stylistic and then also plugin. And we'll get to a lot hopefully all of these features in upcoming episodes. We go to color overlay, click on it. I just want to also point out to you, if you look here in the option sidebar on the right, after I had added it, the color overlay, it appears here. And then there's a little eyeball here. Of course, that is disable and enable the effect. So if I click on it, it's going to remove it. And then if I click again on it, it's going to enable it. If I decide that I didn't want to use this effect, I just go here to the bin or the trash can or the garbage can and you click on it and that one is gone. Then we add it back again, color overlay. Then this third one is called the mask. Now masking, we're going to bring in into the future. Yes, because masking is actually where all the power lies within any photo editor. For example, you want to apply this overlay, but you don't want to apply it to the entire image. You just want to apply it to the background, not to the two humans in here. And then you use a mask to remove it. So we'll get to that. Hang on to your hats. Let's go and apply a nice pastel color overlay. And you see, actually, there are a few here already. If we choose this one, it's a little too harsh. Again, you see, this is what you have to remember for that moody effect. You need the soft colors. Let's go grab a soft color. I like this one, rosy rose. Okay, click here. And then you paste it there within the area. I think that's correct. And you see it looks much better. There's your opacity. Nice and baby-like. Let's see if we'd use this green. That should apply a very different effect. Maybe a little bit of a problem with the green. Oh, wait, and control V. Gives you a different effect, but also actually pretty nice. Then you play around with the slider and you see the less saturated a color is, the, the more you can move up the opacity and it will still look good. But if you bring in a hard color like this one over here, you're going to see when we go into Topaz Studio, it's not going to have the same effect. It looks a little bit harder. And once you bring in those colors, you have to reduce the opacity. So working with weddings, working with babies, working with things like a spa where you want people to feel that they are relaxed, the number one color to start with is white. That will always give you a nice soft effect. And then if you want to go into the colors, go check out the pastel colors, schemecolor.com. There's a lot of others on the market as well. And you just look over here, you see birthday pastels, rainbow pastels. This one is, please, pastels turn me on. Very nice. We've got a very good selection here of pastels. Before we exit, something that we have now touched on during this video, and that is the color code, often referred to as hex, H-E-X, and it's something that you see in page builders all the time and photo editors. Every color out there has a name. It's got a code that makes that color unique, and it's a six-digit code consisting out of letters and numbers. Actually, if you read the description here at the bottom, it's very cute. They say the rainbow pastels color scheme palette has six colors, which are light salmon pink. I guess it's that one, which is FF9 AA2 melon. Okay, melon, very pale orange, like my skin during winter, dirty white, magic mint, magic mint, and periwinkle Crayola. Okay, they took it from Crayola. Very nice how they describe it. But actually, those are made up names. These are names that we use to give color some kind of visualization when we talk to each other. But at the end of the day, you see over here, the hex. There we go. The hex. That is what we are interested in. This code over here, the hex. So you can go online and you can go search for colors and color schemes and color themes and color palettes. These are the words that we use for it. When you find the color that you like, let's say you want to use this one, you either write it down on a piece of paper and then type it into your photo editor. Or if it has an option like this one that says copy code, you just click on it. And now it has copied this code. Going then into your photo editor, you will find that here it says HTML, 
that will be the hex value select that and paste it and there's always a hash in front of it and you say okay the same if you are working within a page builder in this case you see it's down here in my overlay again i will highlight it and i'll paste it we have the same effect that is what hex colors or html codes are all about when you're working with colors and that brings us to the end of this episode 7 here better images with jp see you in the next one